This is how the Central Coast wakes up and rocks. Well, I got good and bad news. Good morning, everybody. Um, and, well, you know what? I think everybody's heard. Did you hear about Jeff Bridges? No, I haven't heard. He's got cancer. He's a very... My, my headphone. What do you want? Up or down? Up. Yeah. How's that? That's way better. You need me louder in your ears? No. Um, Jeff Bridges uh, has lymphoma cancer. Hmm. Jeff Bridges in the in the Abiders, right? The, is, that, is that the name of the band that comes here? The Dude... The dude abides. I don't think I have the name of the band right. But anyways, he, apparently it's a very treatable form of cancer. It's a lymphoma type cancer. I don't know a lot about cancer, but that's what uh, that's what I read in the report. There's not a whole lot there. Not a good um, day for Jeff's yesterday. A pretty pretty uh, Jeff Tubin, quiet guy. Who's Jeff Tubin? The guy from CNN and the New Yorker, the legal analyst. Uh, oh, also pervert. The guy that couldn't contain himself mm-hmm. during a Zoom meeting. <laughs> And then uh, Jeff Bridges, yeah, Jeff Bridges. You 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 uh, saw him on the freeway, right? I'm one hundred percent positive. My wife says no, but we were driving. Uh, it was between uh, Santa Barbara and Carp, as I like to refer to Carpinteria, yes. also known as Carp. Because why would you closer look, to Carp? Why than would it was you just call Santa. yourself Carp? Because that is the ugliest fish. It was closer in the, in the, to in Santa the, Barbara. I mean, closer to Carp than uh, Santa Barbara. Um, uh, my wife gets upset when I refer to it as carp because she says I try too hard to sound like the locals. Like a, like a Kardashian? That's how they talk. No. Oh, my God. Did you go to carp yesterday? Did you see what's going on in carp? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Did you go, did you go to Barbara? You sound like Michael Scott when you're talking about the, 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 what, the Wall Street Journal. And somebody says, yeah, it's in the journal. What's that? You know, the Wall Street Journal. Oh, you mean the wall? <laughs> so you just make things up now you just, you just, people call it carp what do you call slow do you call it slow or do you have your own little name like uh oh you mean obispo <laughs> oh you mean uh you mean uh i don't know what you would say people the, oh, so, S-L-O. so when you call it slow you're it's the equivalent to calling carpinteria carp okay All what right. about ag is instead of royal grande it's ag sure can we call it ag I'm going to start calling the Royal Grande Ag. You heading down Ag? Yeah, I'm going to be down in Ag later. What's that? What's that? Royal Grande. Come on, dude. Royal Grande. I think people need to call towns by their proper names unless it's Carp or Napomo. Nip. You, you I'll know, be a Nip later. You know why I refer to it as Carp? Because it's the most ridiculous nickname of a town ever. <laughs> it is. It is pretty funny. It makes it. It makes a beautiful place. Sounds so, so trashy. Were you driving? And bad. Were you driving north or southbound on the one one between southbound, Santa Barbara and, and southbound Carp? heading to Los Angeles? And uh, we're in the fast lane, and I look over, and there he is. He's driving like a Toyota Camry, and it was like a gold Toyota Camry. And I'm like, wait a minute, is that? And I, I know he lives down there, so I'm like, I'm like looking at him, and my wife realizes that I'm staring at him, so she she backs off on the speed and lets him go. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, you're staring at that man. I don't want you staring at him. I was like, because it was Jeff Bridges. And she's like, no, Jeff Bridges wouldn't drive that kind of car. And I think I, I said. I think he would. I think he would. Yeah. That's I think he thing. would. <laughs> Let's see. How do we find out what kind of car Jeff Bridges drives? Does Jeff Bridges drive a Toyota Camry? <laughs> <laughs> what color was the Camry? Like silver? I want to say it was one of the, yeah, innocuous, like, you know. like. Did he have a beard or like, was like he shaven? Either, it was either gray. Had a beard for gold a while. or maybe that like really dark green. Um, yes, he had a beard. He looked like Jeff Bridges from the Big Lebowski. Is that the only celebrity you've really run uh, into or next to? On the to? freeway? Just in general around here. On the freeway? I've only ran into one celebrity here. It was Jeff Bridges, right? No, it wasn't Jeff Bridges. Oh, no, that's not true. I mean, well, that was at an event where he was the King Vidor uh, recipient, and I oh, photobombed... Just- um, I wanted to I wanted to say hi to Jeff Bridges and everybody kept wanting to get his picture taken so I started photo bombing people right in between Jeff Bridges' head and whoever the person was getting their photo and one of Suzanne's friends got uh, got a picture. The problem of is the bad him. news about the lymphoma is is dominating headlines so when you look up to see what kind of car you yeah drives, that's, it that's does, it, it you're gonna have to go twenty pages <laughs> in at least nobody wants to talk about his Toyota camera they want to talk about his lymphoma unfortunately. he did say. 
uh, that uh, it, it back in uh, 2006, if uh, Jeff Bridges or that if uh, the Big Lebowski was a guy that was around in 2006 in an interview, that uh, he thinks that the dude would drive like a Hyundai Excel, but that would be the dude, not uh, Jeff Bridges. You know that that would be his, not the Torino, but he would drive like an E6 Hyundai Excel. All right, God, those are bad cars. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to give a look into it too. Uh, I don't think you'll ever find out what kind of car Jeff Bridges drives. Yeah, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I mean, that I'm going to keep looking. That is information that one. needs to be on the internet. Okay, right? Like I, if I, there's got to be somebody got a picture so of him. There's so much stuff on the internet, but I can't look up what kind of car a celebrity drives. <laughs> Come on, what good are you, internet? Well, we'll keep looking into that. Um, let's see. Um, what was the guy I ran into? The one guy I saw, he was all in black, black jeans, black shirt, black shoes, driving a black, uh, like, um, Camaro or, um, no, no, no. It was a Dodge Charger. It was in Pismo Beach. It was the guy that was in Bad Santa. He's got like three names. Billy Bob Thornton? Yes, Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton? I didn't talk to him. I just saw him. We were sitting there eating at the place next to Crack Crab. Are you sure? The What's it called? Damn it. The, the I can't. My brain. But it's right next to Crack Crab. It's right there. And, oh. uh, he was coming out of the wine bar there. Puffers. He was coming out of Puffers, and uh, everybody was mobbing him. And I'm like, oh, my God, Charlene, look at that. There's there's uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, yeah, brother. How's it going? I didn't, we couldn't hear what he was saying. But he was within 20 feet. And I thought, there you go. Finally saw a celebrity. Just here to get some oysters. Never, I've never ran into any celebrities. Uh, Somebody told us they ran into James Hetfield at a, that gas station across from the park in Paso Robles, the downtown park. The one right there on the corner. That was years ago. The Sinclair station? Yeah. Next to the rodeo? Remember? They called in and they said, uh, <laughs> they said he, he, I, re, I can't remember the conversation. I, wish I, I could, could see James that, Hetfield but, hanging out in Paso. Yeah, you know, he was in there. He's probably doing some wine. I bet you there's a lot of celebrities that come to Paso and they do we some gotta get We got to get Pink and uh, James Hetfield together in the Pine Street Saloon so they could do karaoke, celebrity karaoke, with the drummer from Green Day because those are people that have done karaoke. Not Hetfield, but uh, Pink and the drummer from Green Day. Trey Cool. Who's that? Trey Cool? Yeah. That's the drummer. That's his from, name? That's How do we not know his name if his name is Trey Cool? <laughs> well, I'm never going to forget that's, that now. That, he was, he's he's uh, been spotted uh, singing karaoke at the Pine Street Saloon. We have to do a word, um, and I have some more information on uh, Jeff Bridges, but what's the word right now? Here it comes. Money for nothing, $1,000 every day. You can win it if you know the word. Can't find the word. There it is. All right, here we go. It's Wednesday. It's 6 a.m. Well, not quite. It's after now. But the 6 a.m. word is alarm. Better set your alarm so you're not late to work. A-L-A-R-M. Jeff doesn't even have an alarm anymore. He uses his phone. I set like five alarms on him and I turn them off. I guess you have an alarm. And I go back to sleep. Yeah. So there Uh, you go. Alarm. By the way, Jeff Bridges did voice ads for Hyundai in 2010. So... If I go back to the timeline in which I saw him, maybe it was not him because... Or maybe he said he would drive, the dude would drive a Hyundai, and that's why he did well, voice work for Hyundai. If you're doing voiceovers for Hyundai, don't you think you get a car? you got to get a car if you're doing voice work for Hyundai and you're Jeff Bridges. They're like, hey, you know, here's a Sonata or something along those lines. Or was the Sonata not good enough for him and he had to go with the Camry? The Toyota. I'm sorry. The Toyota Camry is the number one car that has Kleenexes in the back window, okay? Like, it's got a box of Kleenex in the back window. Maybe not now. I, I think the brand new Camry is actually kind of nice. Well, but, you said the Camry is the senior citizen's vehicle. Well, yes, but I, I've been looking at the new Camrys, and they're kind of, they're kind of racier. They're, they're kind of sportier. Then the old, I don't don't know if Camry could ever you know shake the stigma of being the reliable car for the senior citizen uh, you know I guess demographic if you will but it does look the new Camry does look a little bit flashier but the one he was driving no way man he look it was an old lady's car man well that's how he's incognito I know and it gets good gas mileage it didn't even have tinted windows I was like dude everybody can see all your business.
Oops. Okay, so I don't want to come across as, um, I don't know, being fruity by asking you this question, but it sounds like it is a kind of a fruity question to ask a guy asking another guy. Oh, it's okay, because we've known each other a long time, and I, I don't think there's a... We're, we're cool with that? There's anything you could ask me that I'm not. Me I'm not hitting on you. You know, you're, you're, you know that I'm not hitting on you when I ask you a question. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah, I know that you're not hitting you're on You're not me. my type. <laughs> Too short. <laughs> okay, you almost baited me into saying I'm taller than your wife, but that was a bit weird. <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> um... <laughs> Oh, so you're interested, huh? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> All right, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Uh, <laughs> how uh, often do you dream? Uh, there's a reason why I'm asking this question. Oh, um, whether it's a dream or a nightmare or just some sort of dream, I have well, every night. Every night I have every, something. You remember your dream every oh, night? Oh, every night I have something. Not, not, not really clear what all the time. What was last night's dream? I had two nightmares last night. Nightmares. Well, I don't know. The first one wasn't really a nightmare. I just remember, and see, this is all I remember from the dream, and I know there was a lot more to it, but I'm driving down the driveway of the house I grew up in, and, um, and it's, it's rural. It's out in the uh, foothills of Mount Rainier. Come down a long gravel driveway, come around the corner, and there's our house. It's got a, and the garage, one of the garage doors open. I go inside. And you go through the laundry room and then a bathroom and then you go into like a rec room and then you go up some stairs and then I n- see the living room and then all of a sudden everything is gone. All the, uh, all the TV components are gone. Uh, and I wake up. I'm like, Oh my God, we were robbed. And I wake up. My and pants are a little tight. Oh boy. Let me fix that. So then I fall back asleep and I have another weird dream. Uh, I, and it takes me back to my great grandma Mabel's house who lived in Tacoma near the Tacoma Mall. Uh, it's, you know, not right in the city, but a suburb of right outside of downtown. And, you know, many houses. I'm coming out of this old house that was built in the, I don't know, 40s. And uh, I'm walking out to an SUV, and I got my hands full. And I'm trying to open the hatch, and this guy's coming at me in a trench coat. And he's got that scream mask on, but he's very disheveled and dirty, like a like he's been living in the bushes or something. And he goes, Rah! and I go, ah! and a I little woke, boogie in it. I woke up. <laughs> Now this is so rare that you would ask me this question, and I would have. I normally never remember my dreams or nightmares, but I just happen to remember those two, and I it just happened to have them both. Well, how do you know you dream night. every night if you if you? Well, because I always ha- I always wake up thinking, well, that was weird, or but uh, then you forget it like after the fact. Is yeah, but thing. I mean, I'm all over the place. But normally, I'm always going back to something in my childhood, like the surroundings, like the wherever I'm at. It's at a, a childhood home, like, like I said, my grandma's house. Uh, where I went to high school. Jordan Spieth is hot. Um. <laughs> Golfers. No, I don't. And no, you're never in my dreams. So we could just get that out there right now. I've never I dreamed might not about be you. In your dreams, but I love the smell of Matt. Yeah. <laughs> Different. Um, recent survey. The reason why I asked this is, and I want to see if we can replicate the. Uh, results of a re- recent survey because i think this survey's bunk but then again i mean people are just answering i mean there's no skin in the game for them 35 percent of people say that they dream nightly i don't believe i dream nightly i b- believe i dream a few times a week maybe once a week i don't believe i dream nightly Hmm. You said you dream nightly. Yeah, I know. And you know, if there's a therapist listening, please feel free to call in 805-543-3693. We'll give you a plug. Maybe you can analyze just a couple things I just said. Maybe analyze something that Jeff says. How about pay for your plug? (laughs) Most of my dreams also. That's what I say. You know what? Most of my dreams also, I'm always like carrying something. I'm trying to get through some sort of obstacle. I'm always, it's so weird. I don't know what that means. I should Google that. I'm always, uh, like, the other night I was driving a boat, and there was people in the way, and I was trying, it's always stressful, I'm trying not to hit the people, and then all of a sudden the boat turned into, like, a wakeboard, and uh, and then I sunk. Nah, it means it whirled around just falling apart. I don't know what it means, but I'm always in that some sort like of stressful so you don't situation. A, you don't need a therapist. I got that. you. I got, you got me. Yeah, sure. That's easy. My world's falling apart? Yeah, it doesn't it, feel that it, way. It's tough I mean, to navigate. It's, it's very easy. I can break this down. And by the way, 805-543-3693 if you want me to break down your dreams. Jeremy, it's tough to navigate the waters. Yeah. 
of what's going on right now. And I yeah, believe sure. a lot of people are having to deal with this. And then um, just when you think you've got the right vessel to do so, that <laughs> goes to crap. Something else throws it up that, goes, that goes to crap it's on you. It's And then you're left with a wakeboard. I don't know. Maybe that's it, Jeff. How do I change this? How do we... Uh, I want to analyze this, and I want to make a change. You know what I do? I go back to sleep. <laughs> Got a poll question. Uh, how often do you dream? It's the SurfNet Communications poll question. Nightly, a few times a week, once a week, a few times a month, or never. Let us know. Uh, Ivy, what are you doing for uh, Halloween this year? I haven't even asked you about this yet. I know you got kids, so you're going to dress up as something. So I've been told that we're going to go trick or treating. That's right. You've been told what you're going to be too. Now, Your I wife don't know. I saw costume. something from the CDC the other day that said, "No, don't go trick or treating." But then certain communities—that's not a you know—that's a recommendation. Then certain communities around here are like, "Yeah, we're." Really, a CDC? We're going trick or treating. But you just had a birthday party. I'm not trying to call you out, but you just had a birthday party. You had a bunch of people there. You had kids there. You had mom and dads there. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how many people you have there, but I'm guessing at least ten. So, I mean, what's the big? I mean, you're going to have more contact with people there than you are trick or treating. Mm. Here's the thing, okay? Unless I, what the COVID's I, on I the want, candy. I want to. I want to take the kids trick or treating. I, I want them to have as close to normal as possible. Here's my problem with all of it. The issue is. How weird are people going to be about the trick-or-treating? I mean, is this going to be uh, time well, to, to showcase you're crazy? Like, are there going to be people with poles, with little grabber things on the end of the poles, handing out the candy over? <laughs> A grabber stick. Just to show how creative they can get during COVID times? Because that guy, I want to take that pole and and tell him where he can put it. Hey, well, you know what? He's giving you candy. I understand that, but dude, shut your lights off and just well, people, don't give anybody candy. Oh, well, people actually disinfect the candy when it gets home. Don't touch your candy, kids. Leave it in the pillowcase. No, Mom I think and dad are going to go through it and disinfect it all. I think if you're going to the point where you're going to go trick-or-treating, you're not buying it. You're not... Uh, you're not worried about oh, Okay, so you're saying, yeah. Or maybe you've already got the coronavirus, and then you're like, oh, well, eh, yeah. Not that many people here ever got it, but uh, 805-543-3693. I'm kind of curious if people are going and what the deal is. You can text in your answers um, if, you're, if you're worried about it at all. I'm guessing if you're going, you're not worried about it. But if you are going to go because you're, you want your kids to enjoy it, what precautions are you taking? Will you be in a costume? costume? Do you know yet? Yeah. Okay. And uh, will it match your kids' costumes? Or are they? Is it my you, daughter? Okay. My son and wife are going together. My daughter and myself are going together. The last two years, I've been pa partnered up with my son. Oh, I see. So, so what are you going to be with your daughter? I'm not at liberty to say because I don't want people the copycat the co no the COVID police uh, to be like oh that's irresponsible of you and you're. you're it's irresponsible with... of you to tell us what your costume is? No, to go trick-or-treating, and I don't want to be identified from what the costume is. Oh, I see. About. But you'll be out with all the other trick-or-treaters. I'm like, yeah, screw those guys. Stay home. Wear your mask. I'm not, I, well, I'll be wearing a mask. Oh, you will? Yeah. I'll tell you that much. So yeah. I will be. Will you bring any candy in like you've done in years past to share with me? That's yeah, do you I'm... want me to spray it yeah. down with something? Nope. I just want you to bring in, I like Skittles, Starburst. Um... This is all the candies that my kids like, by the oh, way. Oh, come on. What? No, I know that. Don't they like chocolate? You like Skittles, Starburst, and you're going to say Sour Patch Kids, right? Yes. Yeah. No, that's that's what they go for. That's Damn. like the number one for them. So if I want any of their candy, I'm going to have to call them M&M's. Say, hey, guys. Hey. M&M's is what you're going to get because that's what they do not like. <sighs> I know M and &M M's are so overrated. I saw They're such an overrated candy, like M and M's, because you could use them in baking. I understand that's why the popularity. What, cookies, yeah, or cakes. Or well, I, I will take an M and M cookie over a chocolate chip cookie any day of the week. Okay, you get that extra candy coating; it's great. But um, oh, because the candy melts inside of the yes, coating. Yes, that's so the best. It doesn't. It, do, it it's true. a cleaner cookie to eat. You could eat it on the go because the chocolate stays inside. Same thing with. Uh, uh, chocolate chip pancakes. I will take M&M pancakes over chocolate chip pancakes any day of the week because 
of the fact that the chocolate chips. Never had M&M's in my pancakes. Oh, it's excellent. You my wife's always trying to put blueberries in there. I'm like, no, nah, no, I have to be in the mood for that. I'll get you some blue M&Ms, and then you can act like you're putting blueberries in them. <laughs> <laughs> See how I look? Blueberries in my pancakes. <laughs> well, apparently there's a couple of new costumes out this year, uh, and one of them is the sexy mail-in ballot costume. You know, it had to come um, ridiculousness, right? Anyways, we shared that on our Facebook page. You can check it out now at uh, Jeff and Jeremy. Subscribe to the Jeff and Jeremy podcast now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and YouTube. It's your Central Coast commute-friendly podcast.